In this video, I'm going to show you how to auto boot Windows games within the RetroArch DOSBox Peer Core. So I recently covered how to install Windows 98, 95, and ME on the DOSBox Peer within RetroArch for PC and Xbox Series X and S. And not too long after the video was posted live, I was asked this comment by Andy who asked if it was possible to boot directly into the chosen game within the virtual copy of Windows. So I immediately said, no, not that I'm aware of, but then I do love a good thought experiment and began thinking about it and came up with this answer of, yeah, actually it should be possible, you would just need to have multiple virtual hard disks. And sure enough, after testing it, it totally works. So this video is going to show you all how to do that exact process. So I'm not going to be going back over the entire install process of how to get Windows 98, 95, or ME up and running on your chosen platform. You can refer back to the original install videos for that. In this video, we are purely focusing on the auto boot aspect. So let's get started. So first things first, you will need to have RetroArch installed on your PC or Xbox Series X and S. This guide will also work on any version of RetroArch that supports DOSBox Peer, so that could be phones and other things like that. But, I mean, my main platforms are PC and Xbox, so we're just covering those specifically, but the steps should apply. So the first thing that you are going to want to do is install a copy of Windows 98 inside of your RetroArch version. So again, you can refer back to my Xbox or PC version of how to do that. And when you get to the section on creating a virtual hard drive, you are going to want to choose just the default 512 megabyte drive size. Now you can choose the 256 megabyte option as long as you know your games are running only DirectX 6.0 or earlier. If you needed to use DirectX 7 or DirectX 8, the 200 and 56 megabyte hard drive size is not enough to get that installed without modifying Windows. So just for the sake of keeping it easy for everybody, choose the 512 megabyte hard drive size when installing Windows, and then you could do a compact install, get your Voodoo drivers installed, and we're ready to begin. So inside your RetroArch folder, be this on Windows or Xbox, if you followed my guide, you should have all of your RetroArch stuff on an external hard drive. So we'll pull that up real quick. So over here I have Windows, over here I have my Xbox. But you'll find your system folder, and that is where all of your virtual hard drive images are stored. So here I have my 512 megabyte virtual hard drive, and I named it Windows 98 Second Edition Default. This is my base default Windows 98 install. So it's just Windows 98 with the Voodoo drivers installed, but I also installed DirectX 8.0, or 8.1 rather, on it just to uh, streamline my install processes for other things. And if I go into my Xbox folder, you can see that I have the same thing. So I'm kind of just doing double stuff here because it is literally the same process, but we're gonna just focus on Windows from now on. If you're on Xbox, like it's the same thing, Access your system folder, find your default install image, and uh, just follow along. But anyway, from here, once you have your default image made, we're just going to make copies of it for every game that we're going to install within Windows 98. So yeah, there we go. I've made four copies of my Windows 98 default image. And I'm not going to touch this default image. This is going to be just my default image. Like, that's what it is. Anytime I'm going to install a new Windows 98 game, I'm going to copy this image for that game. But as you can see, like, if you have a lot of Windows 98 games, this is going to take up a considerable amount of space really quickly. That's why using this smaller hard drive size is very important. But I'm just going to go through and name each of these virtual hard drive images after a game that I'm going to install to it. So, Beast Wars, StarCraft, Tiberian Sun, And Rogue Squadron. Those will be my example games for today. But once you have those virtual hard disk images made, just load up your copy of RetroArch. So if you're on Xbox, unplug the hard drive, put it back on your Xbox, and boot into RetroArch. 
And then once inside RetroArch, we could just go into our Windows 98 games playlist or load things up manually, however you want. And we could begin loading up our games. So, um, actually I have Beast Wars Auto set to boot to that Beast Wars hard drive already. So we'll start with StarCraft. So if you're on Xbox, hook a keyboard up to your Xbox to make this next part really easy. But anyway, hit scroll lock to turn game focus mode on. And we're going to run an installed operating system. And you will see all of your virtual hard disk images here. So I am trying to load up StarCraft first. So we're going to go StarCraft. Press the right arrow key to set this as your auto boot hard disk image for StarCraft. And once your copy of Windows 98 has booted, just go ahead and get the game installed as you normally would. So I have Brood War as the first disc inserted here, so I actually need to change that real quick. So I'm going to turn Game Focus off, go in here, change my disc to just the original StarCraft disc, refresh the disc image inside of my computer. There we go. And I'm going to install StarCraft. Whoops, forgot to turn game focus back on. And now you need to choose an install directory, and this is where things need to be a bit more specific. So thanks to our smaller hard disk size, we're going to be utilizing that D drive for most games. So with StarCraft here, I could just select D drive pretty easily. But we're going to need to shorten the file names a bit here. So make your directory names as short as possible because we are going to be limited to DOS character limits here to get the auto boot process to work. At least using the method I'm showing. There are multiple other methods out there, but this is the one that I think is the easiest to really explain. But I'm just going to name my directory SC for StarCraft. It doesn't really matter. This is the only game that's going to be on this virtual hard disk. And then the game will install as normal. And then I'm going to exit out of that. And I'm going to install Brood War as well. And then I could just ensure that the game is actually running. Which it is. Alright. Now to set up the auto boot process. So click on start run and type in ms config and this will bring you to your system configuration utility and we are going to edit the autoexec.bat file so we're going to add a new entry type in win space and now we need the file path to our executable so for starcraft sc then I'm going to choose my StarCraft executable here. And if you go into Properties, it'll give you the location for it right here. So we could just copy that. Add in another slash. And type in StarCraft.exe. And then press OK. And it'll say, hey, you need to reboot your computer for this change to take effect. So click Yes. And if it was done correctly, when your Windows 98 install boots back up, or your Windows 9X install boots back up, the game should automatically launch, just like this. And there we go. That is one method you could use to auto-boot your Windows 98 games. Like I said, there are many ways to do this process, but this is one of the easiest, in my opinion. And the great thing about this, if we go in, we can still change disks on the fly with the disk control option. I can change over to StarCraft Disk 1. Click OK there. And it'll let me play StarCraft base missions as well as Brood War missions. So now it's going to ask me to do the Brood War disk. So same thing. And it is just a nice and easy way to play these games. But now for just a quick demonstration of doing it all directly from within RetroArch. Here is my StarCraft Brood War 
playlist entry. You can tell it to run. Windows 98 is booting up. And now StarCraft is booting up. Now, when you are done playing, you still need to go through the whole shutdown process like you would on a normal Windows 98 PC, or you risk corrupting your virtual hard disk image. But the startup process is definitely much quicker. And now, just for another example, we'll do Beast Wars. This one will auto-boot into that Beast Wars hard drive image that I just uh, copied, since this was one of my test games that I did this with. But you would go through and do the same thing. You would choose the virtual hard disk image you named after the game, Set that as your auto boot option within DOSBox Pure. And then once you are inside of your virtual Windows install, you go back through and install the game like you normally would. And again, remember to choose shorter file paths because this Hasbro Interactive one doesn't work. Program files doesn't work. So again, I'm just going to choose my D drive, rename it, uh, choose a directory named BW for Beast Wars. Yes, I want to create it. There we go. Install. And now Beast Wars has um, a video setup thing that you have to run first before the game will actually run. So I'm just going to do that real quick and tell it OK. Cool. But same thing to get the auto boot set up. Run MS config autoexec.bat. New entry, win, space, need the file location, so dbw, slash bw.exe, okay, yes, I will restart. And when my virtual Windows 98 restarts, it boots automatically up into Beast Wars. Or what the... That was weird. Anyway. And now Beast Wars is ready to play. And that one is now ready to go. And now just a quick example of what happens if a game has an executable that work with the autoexec.bat method. So Rogue Squadron is an interesting one. It actually has two executables. We have the Rogue one, which brings up the launcher. And we also have just the straight up Rogue Squadron one that starts up the game. So I don't want to load up a launcher. I want to load straight into the game. So this is the one that I want. So if I come in here and grab the executable run msconfig type in win directory rogue squadron dot exe now when I press ok and it reboots it's likely gonna give me an error Or not. Oh, yes, okay. So it didn't air per se this time because it was able to find something with the name of Rogue. It doesn't like spaces. So one method, you can rename the executable. This isn't always recommended because it might break something. But you can create a shortcut to it and rename it something like RS. So that way it will point back to the longer file, but still be perfectly usable within our autoexec.bat. So if we go back into MS and MS config, we can edit this and let's shorten this down to just RS.
And I forgot the dot .exe part like a dummy. Good stuff. Double check your spelling. There we go. And I am once again a dummy and forgot that Windows 98 things named their uh, shortcuts not as executables. They're actually .lnk files. So that explains the error that I was getting there. But if we just do that, press OK. Now the fourth time should be the charm. But glad that I could show you all that little error process there. Now another good use of shortcuts is if you actually do name your directory with spaces or something like that and don't want to reinstall the whole game, you could just make a shortcut, drag it over to your desktop or something, doesn't really matter, just somewhere in a directory where it doesn't have spaces. And then we could rename this something shorter or if you go into the properties and go to general, you'll see that it actually has an MS-DOS name and you could po paste that into your autoexec.bat and it will load it up but grab this real quick run msconfig I already have an autoexec.bat entry here for Battle for Naboo but it wouldn't run because there were spaces in it so I can now change this over to my shortcut and if I look at that MS DOS name right here, short C1 link. There we go. And now when it reboots, it should load up that shortcut, which will launch Battle for Naboo. And there we go. It booted it up, loaded it right to the launcher, so it's not exactly what I want. So if I go back in, I believe there is a secondary executable for Battle for Naboo under PC? Yeah, there we go. So I'm actually just going to make a shortcut for this one real quick. Bring that over to the desktop. And it uses the same MS-DOS name, so I don't even have to change anything in my autoexec.bat for this one. Nice. So now, if I were to restart... It now boots directly into the game. But after you finish the process of making all the virtual hard drives for all of your individual games getting them installed in their individual hard drives, and then setting up your autoexec.bat file, you are now greeted with a playlist that will auto-boot into each of your Windows 98 games as you start them, and the experience is definitely much more streamlined. And with the ability to change disks on the fly, it is just a really nice way to play a lot of these compatible older games. But that's going to do it for this video on auto-booting your Windows 98 games. But thank you so much as always for watching this video. I hope you have found it informative and it helps you get your emulation projects a little more in line with what you are expecting. As always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below. I'll do my best to try to help you out. But now I do have a couple of huge favors to ask you here at the end of the video. If you haven't done so already, please hit that like, dislike button, depending on how much you like it, and that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new content comes live on the channel. Tons coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen when it appears. Little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing all of this content to you. Big shout out to all of our current backers, thank you for keeping us going and believing what we do here. Y'all are such champions.
But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.